So hi everyone, my name is uh, Arthur Madrid. I'm CEO and co-founder of The Sandbox. Um, I sold my company to a, a company called Animoca. In, it's a Hong Kong-based company listed in Australia. Animoca was um, a traditional gaming company and two years ago, they decided to focus doing blockchain gaming. Uh, and I'm here today to to share with you like the way we use blockchain into gaming. We all, I know we, we are like five people, so I, I may do the presentation in five minutes instead of 25. And maybe you can ask me a question on that about like, like how you perceive blockchain technology into, in gaming. It's like how many of you owns a, a, a crypto wallet? One, one person, all right, two person. Good, 50% of the, of the audience. All right, so Animoca is a Slavish game company. We, we began doing a lot of partnership with, with blockchain, traditional uh, blockchain technologies, blockchain layers, um, like Elix, Wax, Dapper. Um, and we, up, like what was very interesting with blockchain is um, we were the, able to bring talent, like traditional people from Kabam or Xbox, got really interesting about like what blockchain could, how blockchain could improve gaming and, and monetization and, and user experience. So we also been able to hire uh, talent from traditional um, amazing companies. So one of the very first blockchain game we did, like we signed Formula One, and we began selling virtual cars. So like uh, we did a couple of auction, like I think one, the, the most expensive auction went up to $100,000 for a car that is uh, only virtual, like a collectible car. Um, then we did an acquisition with a company called Striking, who owns the right of uh, Bayern Munich. Well, like instead of buying like a uh, virtual car, you were able to buy virtual uh, players. Uh, so in the same way you used to collect uh, and trade card on Panini, for example, like now you're doing as a digital asset online. Um, so I think it's all about ownership and value. So like when people ask me about blockchain, like most of the people related this to bitcoins and speculation. So here it's pretty different. Like the way we are using blockchain in gaming is like, it's been 25 years now that gaming is offering digital assets and ownership around those digital assets. And uh, the way this ownership is perceived is, uh, we, we think it's not optimized. Like we think like it's very different the way you own digital assets with the way you own a, a real asset, a, a, a non-virtual asset. So like when you own something, it's yours, you do whatever you want with it, you can trade it with your friends. When you own a, a digital asset, you basically have a strong relationship with a person that create, with the company that created this digital asset. It can be a song, it can be a virtual good in a game. So you're not free. Like the person that created this asset, the company that created this asset can delete it. The company that created this asset that can change the attributes of the asset. For example, you, you buy a sword on World of Warcraft and um, the company just say, okay, now this world is not uh, used anymore in the game. Um, or there is this very famous trial of Bruce Willis buying like over 40,000 songs on iTunes and he goes to Apple and say, what happened when I die? And, uh, and Apple say, I don't know, like, uh, you, you, like I'm, I, are my kids own these things or not? Like, so you have all, all those like uh, philosophical debate about like, you know, in a world that everything has been dematerialized, uh, how are we gonna, work out the, how we're gonna sink the, the, the ownership uh, of uh, intangible asset, tangible asset, and, and obligation. So it's, yeah, I think it's all over, the blockchain is all about this. Um, I sorry? Can I interrupt that one question? Oh yeah, please, please. please. So, uh, see, maybe that's the economy, uh, you had mentioned your currency. Today we have these coins which you buy in one year. But one of the challenges if I'm games to where there are multiple games, this currency is only for that particular game. Uh, say, for example, I have electronic cards, like I have a lot of games, but the economy of each game is very different. 
you think as blockchain will give you the infrastructure to have a currency across you? Yeah, so any, any views, is this a good idea to have a, like, a uniform currency around multiple games or no because, or the answer is no because the game mechanics are very different and each game philosophy is very different so you should not have interoperable currency across games. I, I think there is like in your question there is two, two, two points. The first point is the interoperability of, of, of virtual goods, and the second point is like your capacity to 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 have a value or cash out this value outside the the, the, the studio. So on, on on the first part about interoperability, yes, of course, it's highly depend on like the game design of where you're going to use it. It's like it's true that if no one are developing any game using and, and ac accepting, assuming this interoperability of items, you, you, you won't get any value or, or benefits from th this blockchain or, or, or this uh, digital asset. Um, but it's like definitely interoperability and our capacity to, to trade those assets in a decentralized way. It depends on the adoption. So, like, if as soon as, in the same way that the freemium model on the smartphone, so I'm, I'm, maybe I can move a little bit here, it depends on where you are in the technology adoption. It's like some things that you perceive a technology on innovation that you perceive at a certain time can be completely different than. Uh, uh, 10 years later. So like, let's say, okay, like video games, like the way I perceived video games 20 years ago was a box on a store. No, like n nobody will, uh, it's just an app on a phone. So like it's, uh, or, or the way I monetize is gonna be like a 60 bucks, $60 game, they're like gonna buy once. Now with a freemium, it, like people can spend over $100,000 on, on a single game on, on, on the lifetime. Also, maybe to answer your question is like, when you see how players engage themselves now in a game, you can also like what can be the, the level of, of um, entertain like the level of entertainment, the level of narrative, the numbers of hours you could spend in a game, is also why we are closing this gap between some things that could just be a token to play Pac-Man for one life to some things that like, okay, now with Fortnite, having those Nike shoes or Gucci belt can be maybe more um, uh, visible and social than just going, going to a restaurant. Um, so we talk about 2.3 billion players now and, and these the second words, these gaming words, also, let's say, um, forced the technology to, to involve. It cannot just be like, if we keep selling virtual goods the same way that we are selling it for 25 years, it doesn't match with the time and, and the visibility that those virtual goods uh, got on, uh, for, for a player. So th that's why here, Animoca branch is on, 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 on the curve of uh, of, of a new technology, of a, a new way to, to reinvent digital assets, and, and, and uh, we, we hope in the next couple of years the adoption will enable what you just say, interoperability, and, uh, and cash out for the, for the player. Um, so true digital ownership, trading, cross-application interoperability, what you just say, and secure and, and immutable. Uh, that's the gaming market, so 2.3 uh, billion gamers. So the statistic is more like to show the market is so big and we think it's an unfair market. Like a, it's a little bit like the CD 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Like uh, as soon as you offer people to move their money faster, to, to be able to trade their own stuff, or like at least if I spend two years of my life playing a game, I think I could should be able to earn something from it. Uh, it can be like with eSport, it can be just because I level up, because I can sell what I, I, I earn and, and green in the game. Um, so the collectible. So apart from gaming, um, one of the trend that blockchain gaming brings at, at the very first um, product is non-fungible token or NFTs. So NFTs market is, I think, the, the, the same way that freemium or, or in-app purchase, you know, like in-app purchase is something that appears with a phone. So if you ask me what is blockchain gaming, I, won't, I will not talk about Bitcoins, I will not talk about, 
I will talk about non-fungible token and NFTs as, as a new term, as, as a trend, which is about collectible, like how uh, you can collect uh, very valuable items based on scarcity. Okay, like uh, how like uh, uh, digital co digital collectibles like a crypto kitty or like a card in the same way that you did with Pokemon with magic card, like how we, we do it uh, online, like a painting, and how is it? It's an investment because I I, I think like, I'm talking about painting also because like your capacity to say oh, okay I I, I, I we're going to have this Formula One because it's in the blockchain. There is only one of the of this car. Right now, you cannot do anything with the car, so it, it sounds stupid. You say, "Okay, this guy spent one hundred thousand, but this guy think this one hundred thousand dollars will worth ten millions the day that people will be able to drive this car in a virtual world on Oculus uh, in a couple of years or in or in a uh, in a virtual reality uh, digital world." Uh, so this, this is. Definitely was the very first company that uh, brings this concept of NFT. You always need a, a you always need one game to show a little bit like uh, a trend. You know, it can be the match tree for gaming or like like a Farmville. You know, like, there are like some games that will be remembered as a, as a beginning of something. You know, and and I think I don't know if CryptoKitties is the best experience in the same way that I don't think Farmville is the best experience for mobile gaming, but I can say they are definitely the pioneer and, and the the beginning of uh, of the NFT. Story. Um, it's here. It's a bit about what I said. Be Sorry, non fungible token. Non fungible token. Yeah. Let me move here. So what is fungible? Like uh, U.S. dollar, intangible, uniform, divisible. What is non fungible, non intangible, distinct, unique, indivisible, and with a limited edition. Like a good example, it would be a postal stamp. Um, there is a, a, a limited numbers of uh, of NFT, which is make it unit with with rarity, secure and immutable, and uh, uh, interoperable uh, between games. Do you have any any question on this? Like, okay. Um, so now about the sandbox. So like, um, uh, we've been developing a game called the Sandbox for almost ten years. Um, it's a Roblox, Minecraft, user-generated content kind of game. We did uh, over forty million install on iOS and Android. It's a uh, it's a 2D Minecraft, so basically people can create their level and create their like world in pixel and share it on our gallery. Um, this is a team. This is our like worldwide team, like uh, on, on different country. We are one of one of the most expected game into the blockchain. This is a trailer. So basically, everything in the game is is uh, made by players. So what brings the blockchains, if you compare with uh, Roblox or Minecraft, is like people are really owning what they do and can trade it into the game. So everything they do in the game, they can upload it into a marketplace and, uh, and, in, and, and in the other way too, like they can buy something on our marketplace and bring it to the game. But is this marketplace only for sandbox people? Different games will have different uh, like collectibles, like that. But the marketplace will be really valuable, but different games come to like, like I use the analogy of Steam. When different games load their players, come, so you cannot be owned by like anyone. It has to be like a. No, because like all those items are also available in any marketplace, like OpenSea or Wax. So like like they could as soon as you own this item, you can put it in any marketplace. So like it's like we we have our marketplace, but like this item can be exported and sold in in other one. And if you ask me, they, they are highly uh, they will be sold uh, much easier. Like like they, the other marketplace like that dedicates themselves to be multi games or having more traffic than our our marketplace. Um, this is a little bit like how we we create an NFT builder. 
because in terms of blockchain gaming, it doesn't make sense to do any kind of gameplay with a blockchain. So it doesn't make sense to do like a match tree for a like with blockchain. It doesn't make sense to do a, a, I don't know, a shooter with a blockchain. Like so, like this idea of building some things and being user generated content. Then when you when you match user generated content with uh, the blockchain, that, that's made a lot of sense because it means all the content that are, are being uh, produced by the users are owned by the users. So it works also for TikTok, it works also for Instagram, it works also for Facebook. It's like, like we, we guarantee to the, to the players the content they produce for the games, they still own it. They can put a price on it. Um, so this is a kind of smart contract we're doing. So we have our own uh, cryptocurrency called Sand. Uh, land, which is a piece of the game that can they, they can buy, so the, like all this metaverse analogy, like the fact that it's not only a game, but it's a, it's a map with a, uh, limited numbers of spaces that uh, the that location that players can buy, um, and it's like creating a new world, creating a new country where like the cryptocurrency is going to be the, the the money of this country, and and the players will be able to decide how they want to use this currency, if they want to use it for governance, if they want to use it to sell, to rent, uh, to trade. Uh, so they are really, really free, and it's very hard to predict. Imagine if Minecraft or Roblox would have been created in, in the blockchain, it would have been much more uh, owned by, by players. Right now, it's still like like when Microsoft bought bought Minecraft, it ended up being like a survival game, a FPS game with like central server. But the way it began was like like early adopters doing their own server and using Minecraft to do and build different kind of gameplay, but without the capacity to really monetize or invent a way to to monetize things. <coughs> Out there, and I don't kind of go to the palace. And then, can I do transactions on that and increase the value of my property? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, can I hire someone else? Yeah. Like, are there just way more gifted than me? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The exactly, like you do in the, in, in, the, in the real world. It's like it's what we are doing. Uh, Your question is, is, is like it's it's like in real life. Like it's like you can just buy a land, but you, you won't be the one that builds the project. You won't be the architect. You may be not be the. Can I buy it for a dollar? Pay okay, someone five dollars to pick this up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's 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 why people buying right now. It's like, and, and I think it's it's a good analogy of what, what like how people see altcoins and token and and, and even non fungible token. It's like they believe that uh, it's like if you buy a you buy a piece of land like in a place that you believe in 20 years or in 10 years gonna like be very popular because like you project like the change of technology or like you be, or maybe like just to use like old energy, a, a road's gonna be built. Like it's like you have a place, okay, I, or as soon as a bridge gonna be built, it's gonna be like a technological, uh, a technology bridge. My point is like, it, it's a definitely a prediction of the, of what you could do. Uh, that with, with. Just supplying the market, a lot of players playing that and I know, like, like perfect. Like, we, we, we did two pre pre sell, like uh, selling virtual real estate. Um, and we sold, yes, like Monday. The first one we did in December, we sold $100,000 value, 500 uh, Ethereum uh, in four hours. And on Monday, we sold $200,000 of, of lands in half an hour. So it's, it's like, it's a niche, but like, it's it's very special. It's different that what what uh, so this very specific thing is working. Like uh, and we're not the only one to do it. You have decentraland. You have other metaverse. Yeah. Uh, 
So it's when it says shot the sheep. Is that, oh, okay. That yeah. So the, the way we decide to to build the metaverse is bringing partners. So we have over thirty partners. The partners can be development studio and can be brands. So it's like yeah, bringing the animation uh, IP from London and say the way you can see it right now, it's more like a huge attraction park. Like well, well, like. The world, because the fact it's in Voxel, we are not doing a virtual reality thing. Like other metaverse may be like very obsessed by reality and bringing you something very real. The way we want to do that, it's more like it's Voxel, Minecraft-like. So it's always been related to fun. It's like not bringing you a like it's not Ready Player One. Uh, it's more like something that yeah, okay, uh, let, let's all build together the digital Lego world. So this is, the flow is still very complicated you still to have a wallet, you need to go to the website and, and, and buy. It looks simple here, it's, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, the onboarding is still very difficult. Um, it's what you said before, you could rent your land and like how the ownership works between the owners, the land itself, the game, the builders, the players and how these things are, are, are transparent. So also what's something that when you see Roblox and Fortnite, um, I think the, the lack of interoperability in terms of digital assets, the first uh, gap that, that, that like we want to, to succeed uh, is based on the avatar. It's, it's like very annoying for players to build in each game another identity. So it's like you spend like hundreds of hours, thousands of hours on one game and you're someone, and then you're no one on the other game. Um, so I'm not saying we're gonna succeed this, but I'm saying like the, the player-centric and the avatar-centric in, in the blockchain, in gaming, like perce perceiving the avatar as an NFT is also um, a huge, a huge challenge when you talk about blockchain and gaming. I think we're really slow now. Oh, this is, this is uh, in game, uh, the very first. Uh, Thank you.